Hello. My name is Thomas and I have a bit of a cautionary tale for you. You see it all started when my wife Amy and I decided that we were ready to have children. It took a while, but when my wife told me that she was pregnant, we were both overjoyed and couldn't wait to meet our new child. At the time, we were living with my in-laws and things were going quite well. We got along perfectly. That is, until my boss told me that he needed me to transfer from our office to the main corporate office on the other side of the country. I would have preferred to stay with my in-laws, but the transfer did come with a large raise and we would need the extra money to help with our baby, so I accepted. Luckily for us, my father and his new wife lived in the city that we were moving to, and while it wouldn't be as nice as my in-laws' house, we planned for it to only be temporary until we found something of our own. My father and I got along great, and he was happy that we would be moving in. My stepmother, though, was someone who I hadn't always seen eye to eye with. You see, my mother passed away many years ago, and for a long time, my father stayed single. But a couple years ago, he met Sonia, who was only a couple years older than myself, and the two of them got married. It was awkward considering how young she was. When we arrived, though, she was polite and happy that we were moving in with them. She especially made a fuss over my wife and made sure she was always comfortable. When I mentioned to them that we would only stay with them long enough until we found our own place, Sonia wouldn't hear any of it. That's silly. You two should stay here with us. After all, we have lots of room and you'll need help taking care of the new baby. While you're at work, we'll be here to watch them for you. I had to be honest. The idea of having a free babysitter was tempting. After all, daycare was very expensive and it would be convenient for us. After a short discussion, my wife and I decided that it was a great idea. We should have realized that something was up though when Sonia began buying lots of baby clothes and a brand new crib. My father tried to say that she was just trying to help us out and that it was just her way of making us feel welcome. Neither my wife or I saw the signs of what this foretold. A few months later, my son Ricky was born and all of us were beyond happy. He was healthy and we all fell in love with him immediately. But soon after is when we began to have issues. My wife was exhausted and worn out from the delivery, so when Sonia began watching over Ricky while my wife rested, it felt like a blessing. But after a while, it began to be a bit too much. As soon as my wife finished feeding Ricky, Sonia would insist on her taking a nap or resting, which gave Sonia alone time with Ricky. Amy noticed that this was happening more and more often. She was grateful for the help, but she began to question why Sonia was denying her time with her own son. And so my wife came to me and was in distress. You need to have a word with Sonia. Why? What's wrong? She is taking Ricky far too much. As soon as I'm finished feeding him, she takes him away and walks around with him. I barely get a chance to ever hold my own child. And if that wasn't enough, whenever she takes him, she never dresses him correctly. She'll take him outside and won't put a jacket or hat on him. And she lets him sleep in dirty clothes rather than cleaning him up before bed. I knew that Sonia was spending a lot of time with Ricky, but I had no idea just how much time she was taking away from Amy. To be honest, I was a bit jealous as I had barely gotten to spend any time with Ricky, but I figured that it was more important for him to spend time with Amy. Meanwhile, I didn't know that not only was I not spending time with him, but that Amy wasn't either. The clothes comment. I had observed it too. And so I went to talk to Sonia and try to figure out what was going on. Hey Sonia, can we talk? Um, sure, what about? We are very grateful for all your help, but both Amy and I feel that we aren't spending enough time with Ricky. I know that you love him, but I think that it's in his best interest to spend less time with you and more time with us, his parents. What's that supposed to mean? It's just that Amy is beginning to feel like she barely sees her own son, other than when it's time to feed him. No, I love him just as much as you two and I have a right to spend time with him. Did you maybe consider that the reason I want to spend time with him is because I can't have children of my own? I had no idea that was the case. And while I had sympathy for her situation, it didn't change the fact that Ricky was our son and that it was important for him to spend as much time with his parents as possible. I didn't know that and I do sympathize. But Ricky is our son and we need to form a bond with him. You will always be in his life as well, but right now. It's very important for us to spend as much time together as possible. But you haven't done anything for him. I've bought all his clothes, his bed, even all his toys, his stroller, everything. What have you done? And we appreciate all of that. But he is our son. Just because you bought him stuff, that doesn't give you more of a right to spending time with him. 
He is a part of Amy and I and represents our love for one another. The next day, I got a call from my wife that Sonia had taken Ricky to watch him while my wife had a nap and when she woke up, that both Sonia and Ricky were gone. I quickly called my father and we began trying to call Sonia to find out where she had gone, but all our calls went to her voicemail. We tried for hours and hours until she finally messaged back. What's going on? Why are you calling me so much? Because we don't know where you or Ricky are. Just pick up so we can talk. Oh, shut up already. I'm fine and Ricky is fine as well. I know what I'm doing. Just tell us where you are. Ricky will need to eat soon and we're all very upset and worried. I could tell that she was beginning to see reason and she finally told us that she had rented a hotel room nearby. Quickly, we all headed over there. I'm not sure what the problem is. It's not like I kidnapped him. You're just overreacting. Are you serious? That's exactly what you did. We trusted you and you betrayed our trust. You don't understand though. Ricky needs a loving mother, and I know that I can be a better mother than you. It's not fair that you get to have such a loving son and I can't. That's enough. We talked about this. If you want to have a child that badly, we can always adopt. But for you to deny my son and his wife time with their own child is wrong. I've been telling you to keep your distance. And instead, you forced yourself into between them and their firstborn child. But I was only just trying to help. Yes, and at first you did. But you took things too far. Amy is right. You broke our trust. I think it would be best for us to move out. No, but Ricky needs me. Please don't go. No, he needs his mother. How were you going to feed him even? I would have figured something out. I bought milk and juice from the store that I could give him. You can't be serious. That's not good for him. Both my wife and I were fed up. We had no idea that my stepmother was capable of doing such an erratic thing. And what made it worse was that she didn't realize that what she had done was wrong. She merely thought we were overreacting. We grabbed Ricky and quickly left, vowing to never speak to Sonia again. Soon after, we began looking for a place to stay and found a house to rent and moved out. It was, of course, a huge adjustment as we had less help around the house. But we knew that it was the right choice for us and for Ricky as well. After that day, Sonia began calling us non-stop, but we ignored her calls. My father even tried to get her to go and speak with a therapist, but she refused as she claimed that there was nothing wrong with her. In the end, he filed for divorce as she was no longer the same person anymore, and he couldn't forgive her for putting his only grandson in danger. Since then, my father comes over to our new place once a week to visit, and as for Sonia, well, she still tries to contact us from time to time. But we are grateful that she doesn't know where we live. Thankfully, Ricky was too young and he won't remember any of this. But we will never again trust Sonia.